Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome, welcome back. If you have, my intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. This particular video is going to be a little bit of a recap of some of the things that I write when I go into what I refer to as flow. Some people call it channeling, some people call it automatic writing. And I just essentially open up to what my... Um, blueprint, <laughs> what I'm able to tune into, what my antennae are branching out into to share in the form of communication and a signal exchange. And what happens is when I share what I've written about, this has to, this particular writing has to do with mathematics, it has to do with conduction, it has to do with um, uh, disintegration, having to do with mathematics and um induction points and rhythmic phenomena, limit cycles, and residency groups and uh, axioms. <laughs> so those are some of the key words that I've used in this particular transmission. Why am I sharing this? When I um, go into a place of bliss or uh, a very coherent space, I essentially just ask for my higher self or the higher version of me that's outside of linearity, um, a timeline that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I go out and I pull back with me an entire alphabet of words and, excuse my noise in the background, sorry, by the way, if we have a little distraction here, but I go into the field and this field is like alphabet soup and I pull in words and linguistics that essentially can we can utilize in a different format this can be coded this can be um variations of formations of word in a particular um in a particular arrangement that essentially when read or presented holds a certain alchemical codex we could call it that allows us to feel into a vibratory frequency of what this uh what these writings offer and that even in itself i know sounded a little bit cold uh, coded but when we're going into these new realms of communication what my guidance team really always invites me to do is open to the potentials and the possibilities that the way that our language has been created, the way our written system has been, isn't necessarily as multidimensional as it could be. Much of our English system and English language is very, um, seems very cut and dry. But in reality, the symbols or the hieroglyphs that we use as our, um, just a person writing or communicating with one another is much more expansive than we necessarily understand. And the more we can play with different pros possibilities, processes, and probabilities on how the universe communicates with us through signals, through synchronicity, through patterns, through thoughts, through visions, sound, et cetera, et cetera, the bigger access we have, or better spoken, the broader access we have to a broader bandwidth of information. And part of what I am doing as part of my mission here on earth is to share ways to do that and how I do it in my own format. And some for some people, this will just be maybe a little activating and it might feel a certain way when I read this information. Other people it won't get it at all and that's okay. Ultimately, um, this is something that I find pleasurable and enjoyable. And the message behind that is we're all being called to share our gifts. Somebody will benefit from them in our own way, whether it be dance, art form, sound, song, uh, writing, et cetera, et cetera. We would not um, necessarily know from a linear perspective how important it is for us to access our inner creativity, to then bring into our reality that which is non-linearity. Um, and so we're each doing that when we feel inspired 
when we inspire others, it's this inspiration, fire, P-H-I-R-E, that lights our inner fire and gives us direction. It gives us the ability to open to more directions and to do it from our own way without following someone else's directions. <laughs> so all of that's a play on words, and that's an example of how I communicate with my, with my team. So I'm just going to pause for a moment, and I'm going to read you what I wrote in regards to the disintegration, the um, limit set, the residency group, all of this mathematical lingo that I had to look up to see what it meant. And much to my happiness, it actually did mean something. <laughs> so we're going to play with that a little bit uh, with this word code uh, in multidimensionality. Part of, the, part of the reason I started doing this was I would do these writings and people would say to me, I don't understand what you're talking about, but I really enjoyed listening to it. It made me feel good. And that made me feel good, of course. Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to start breaking it down so that we can understand how this code works. So I'm just going to read this out loud, and then I'm going to go into the mathematical equations behind the equations of what I'm writing to the best of my ability. This is a living light codex, so it will change as our perspective around it changes. Let us change the verbiage for a moment and use a more tactile information center. Let us hone in on this phase of reduction. Let us reduce and deduce a new set of alchemical codes and set points. For our division has scattered us, but no more. For we understand that our creation is larger than before. It is not open to disintegration. For we have teleported to a new station a new residency group, a new true induction point of resonance and harmonic flow, Capricorn. Our light comes out in waves, pours, floods the senses, for we are a higher spectrum of the evolutional chain, variance, a variance. Come what may, good sport, old chap, let us play. For our bandwidth reunifies at a higher conduction speed, a zippy reduction moment, a grassroots band, a higher impact zone. And within this harmonic leveling up, don't rock the boat, baby, we arrange within this new accessible flow. Mm, let me just pause for a moment. For our bandwidth reunifies at a higher conduction speed, a zippy reduction moment. I had to go backwards a bit. We arrange within this new accessible flow, float, flame, frequency, conduction. And these words are not lost on you. For as you make this sound, the swishing of your signature, it booms, beams out a loud recognition and cuts through the distortion. The methodology may seem counterintuitive, but we assuredly assure you it is not. For your communication board is a scrambled channel descrambler, decoder at the deepest levels, deep space nine, a flow of intercepted signals within your grasp, grasp. And as you grasp these concepts, they weave and wave at you and commingle. Hello, hello, is there anybody out there? Hello, my friend, hello, for your light cannot be restricted by counterintuitive intelligence. As you allow yourself to play at this lux, luxurious level of word science, word soup it may seem, but it holds all of the ingredients for a deeper inscription, subscription. For in the depth of this dive are an abyss of signals and sounds, click clicking, whales, a, a somatic, sonarific boom isolated to this region of space for within this region of space is a clear-cut signal diamond clear-cut quartz that redefines the quantum signal verification of codes an elixir of sorts an isolated triangulation acute with certain edges never explored before we invite you to move out of tunnel vision television and open yourself to more for the sound that moves you moves through you vibration of animation allows you to signal back and reorganize adjusts your score your spacesuit your phonetic time travel the dipping dots of reconstruction smooth as silk for the gossamer threads and moonbeam dreams are a movement of one we invite you to stop drop a line drop 
align, hook in for a moment, fish, right, and reunify with this other aspect of you, your source of stream light technology, your stream of one. Your signal is heard, and we redirect you to a sharp C note, a C chord, for within this chamber is an access point region, a halo, a divine ring. Hello, my friend, hello. Stay with this prose for just a moment, if you will. Establish this link, ink link. Will the sleep away just for a moment, for in this exchange is more. A door is being created, an access point, a reduction, a portal, a transmission that allows you to gain access to something already held deep within you, a chain, your chain, moving up the chain, tickling the chain, gain, chain, gain, for you are not gaining anything really, for how can you if it was already there? Yet it signals you now in a different port, a different recess brain or point port in time pointing back and forward as you hit the switches push the buttons and prepare anew let us decode this smorgasbord for just a moment your delight of the senses in this geometry geometric subdivision is too bold to count and yet we dip the ink for just a moment and invite you to think outside the box what could we possibly wish to convey in this way? Your sound sings it. Swish, swish, Nike. Ah, the wings of flight. The Greeks had it right. Pie. But now, did they? For now, as you decode this, you know there is another way. Another numeric system that holds the divine calculation to reboot the system. But you must stay in flow to decode. Fun, right? To do the dance, make a little love, for within the heart is the answer, of course. You spend this spin, this frequency, all of the time when you write in delight and do not hold yourself back from the never ending flow of perceived quantifications. The numbers have reset their rhythm, extended, have lengthened. For if time has sped up, so too then has the curvature of space, space balls. Hell's bells, Helios, Helios. For within this swing set is a loop, a binding spell, a chemical of dust held within the dust that creates a spatial field of amazement. It opens a new space in space. And there, is the calibration, the exchange of foreign currency, a place where new reactions are at your fingertips, a true space of freedom. How does this apply to you, you might ask, and blah, blah, blah. Your ink blobs are one of your most significant markers, DNA and time, a dance with the math that is written on your soul, your soul codes to birth reality in a whole, new light, a whole new way of life. Do not lose hope in the thoughts that you are not a scientist, for your left brain has left the building. The old adage system within you for your math map has always been written on the heart. You speak it into being. Hold true to this and know that your work is only just beginning to unfold, to flow under pressure. Your team is not far behind you. They never were. They have been awaiting your arrival, and you have arrived with flying colors. Hmm, I might have had a typo there. An iridescent beam of sparkle zip zapping across the sky. Your physiology is changing. Support the system. Support your system. It needs you. Drink your juice. Your chemical exchange is light years ahead. Light it up. Spectrometer. Spectrometer, spectrometer. Remember the flow is in the dance. And then I was thinking of Mayans that dance through portals. Bingo, namaste. So that's the end of that little writing segment. And I'll just kind of give a quick synopsis, an overview of what does this mean? Well, in a nutshell, everything that I write is with so within, as within, so without. So a lot of this is a word play off of things that 
other teachers have said, um, quotes from the Bible, um, you know, even um, the comment, hold true to this and know, well, it's be still and know is the quote, but it's hold true to this and know that it's true, that our work is just beginning. So this isn't just my work. This is a synopsis of all of our work. And essentially what's happening is we are under a sense of pressure. I was hearing Bowie and that pressure is bowing out. And as we bow out in this song, everything is about waves. So we have this idea of particles and particle acceleration. And this is essentially talking about the fact so within, so without. So we are expanding as a human and our mathematical equation of how that looks is also changing. And the word I hear is variance. And I've done more writings on, on variance before and variabilities. So essentially, we are creating this new bandwidth of reality. And this can seem very abstract. So let me just take it back to keep it simple. We're evolving. We're getting help from the cosmos. We have these particles or waves that we exist within. So we're being held or encapsulated by a constant set of numerical definitions or ge um, geometric shapes of sound because sound is frequency and vibration and vibration is essentially associated with a particular frequency. So for example, 432 Hertz is associated with the sound of heart, frequency, love, coherence, 528, I also believe. And there's all these different variations. Schumann resonance has a particular vibration. The earth has a particular signature frequency. All of the planets vibrate and make a sound through space and everything is connected. So we, as a human, are also part of that equation. We are essentially shifting our geometric equivalence that is changing the geometry of how the surface of our system works. If we are part of a matrix or a crystal latticework of vibration, aka waves in electricity and magnetism, if we are growing as a human collective, therefore to our, our numbers, the shape that we are holding, the pattern that we are creating and holding is also shifting and changing. And as we support ourselves, we're able to hold this frequency longer, a long wave. And this allows us to then step forward into that new geometric wave pattern with more support, if this makes sense. So it's that would be the simplified version. As we shift our frequency and our vibration, the universe shifts to meet us. And the way that my guides have shown it is the universe is expanding. Everything is expanding, including us. So I was shown that we are branching out and there's been things within our environment that have been waiting to greet us, to meet us in the middle, to meet us where we are now was a, um, or where we were was more difficult because of the space in between. It's like when you're uh, beginning, you know, you're in a beginner stage of whatever it might be. It's difficult to understand as a golfer, for example, just learning how to golf, you know, they're not going to go on the PGA tour anytime soon, unless that's some by some miracle. But essentially, we've closed that gap to a certain extent. And now all of the ways in which we're playing on the field, we could say football, golf, whatever sport you want to use, has now given us the accessibility to more. So now that changes our coding it changes how we communicate about golf, for example. It changes how we play the game. And the game then is shifting to support us. And so this is the, the description of what, what's happening. 
So in this, I say we are speaking this into being. I highly encourage and invite everybody, if you're interested on learning about language and how the sound looks as far as it, a wave, um, they, you know, Sanskrit, for example, it has a frequency, it has a language, it's got more truth to it, it's got more complexity. So therefore, the frequency and vibration behind the writing of particular languages, it holds a power. Um, we've all heard casting a spell. Well, spelling the words creates a frequency. It creates a language. When we put together letters and then we speak those letters that hold a numerical pattern, that numerical pattern tells us or communicates with us what those numerical patterns represent. We then respond physically, mentally, right? to the feeling of that spelling, the spell that has been cast, that has been sent out, that we are then receiving and responding to. That's communication, that's language. So my guides are just showing there are a lot of ways that we can create this communication. So recognizing that way, the way that we're communicating also is shifting and changing. So, um, I also wanted to share too, one of the things that I've been writing about and I've been noticing is, you know, we're having a lot of fluctuations with the sun and the sun has radiation, right? And so many of us have thought that that is something we want to avoid, but essentially what I'm being shown is that all of these particles, we could call them, my, my guides call them dust. So it's dust particles and gold dust. So these particles that are floating around in our atmosphere are actually part of the soup that we are all part of. So if you think of the air that we're breathing right now as water, and then you think of that, what does water bring to mind? Liquid, right? So I visualize this ether, this ether, this plasma, that I am intrinsically always connected to. There is no separation between my body and the air that I am fluidly connecting with and bringing in and out of me constantly. And we are all in it, literally living, breathing as part of this fluid that is hydrogen oxygen chemically combined to give us the ability to sustain our life and when i think of that as a living fluid of plasma of ether of combination of chemicals that allows me to be i recognize that it's all one body it's part of this body of something bigger than just this body and we are all part of it. So what's happening is we're being called to recognize that all of this is communicating with us because it's alive. <laughs> Oxygen and hydrogen or H2O, right, are alive. They're living, we're breathing these components. And so part of what we speak is also a living frequency of vibration mostly because we are the ones that are living, breathing, walking bodies of vibration that are sending out these signals, these signatures through, and I wrote in here whales and sonar, right? Click clicking. That was a plan where it's like click click as I'm typing, but it's click clicking like Morse code. That's another example of, of language and code and numbers to then transmit a signal through the waves that we then um, receive and interpret. So this is constantly going on and it doesn't have to be through language. It can be through body language, eye contact, which is a form of language too. Um, and so we're really being called as we up level and we go through this to up level what we're saying to each other and to recognize that maybe what we're hearing isn't what we thought it was. So that's the biggest message. The numbers have reset their rhythm. 
they've extended, they have lengthened. For as time has sped up, so too then is the curvature of space. This is kind of a play in words because uh, from my understanding, oh, I was gonna say before I forget, back to what I was saying earlier about the language. You can look up Dan Winters. I think it's um, uh, quantum, mm, I'll have to share the link at the end, but he has fractalfield.com, but he also has, I think, goldenmean.com. And then he has all these forward slash but he has a beautiful video about the waves of letters of language. And he has the Hebrew language primarily and how each letter holds a spin. And each of that spin holds a frequency and vibration. So when certain letters are combined together, they create a fire, P-H-I-R-E. They create a spin that has a frequency that then is felt, um, etc. So that's something that's really fun to look at. And the reason I'm bringing him up is because when I first started writing these, and I said this before, somebody online was like, you need to check out Dan Winter. You're writing about what he's talking about, which I had no idea what I was writing about. <laughs> and oftentimes I still don't until I look it up and I go, oh, so Lux, Lux has to do with lumens, uh, luxurious. It's a level of word science. It's a unit of lum illuminescence or luminous flux per unit area. So when I wrote this, I'm allowing myself to play at this luminous flux and it's increasing the unit per area. Um, and that's just one layer. There's actually more that has to do with that. So as we play with language, it allows us to start to understand language that maybe we didn't understand that was written from ages ago. Oftentimes, um, if you go on, let's say Wikipedia and read about the root chakra, which I really encourage everybody to do, and I might do a video on this because that's really being affected right now uh, for a lot of people, the sense of security and stability, but they had codes. Um, and I'm being called to kind of talk about that just for a moment. So in Sanskrit or in yoga, a lot of the texts have these symbols that are very confusing. They usually involve flower petals and they usually involve a square or a star. Well, that's all geometry and all of that geometry holds a frequency. So what that symbol that they shared with us was a way of expressing the frequency of the message of what was trying to be um, felt or understood. So I'm just going to pause for a second. And so what happens is, um, as I wrote this, I said, let us change the verbiage for a moment and use a more tactile information center. Let us hone in on this phase of reduction. So our tactile information center is done through the cerebral cortex of the brain. And it also is tactile is the physical sensations from the skin, right? They're actually assembled, assembled to form a complete experience in the cerebral cortex, which is apparently to this, the most advanced um, part of the brain. So um, I just Googled this. It says, where is tactile stimuli process? So I play with this. I look this up and I go, well, there's more to this because we're being called to use more of our senses and it's done through pathways, which connect in the two hemispheres. This also has to do with our cerebral spinal fluid. So everything I'm sharing is talking about changes on the earth, but also in our body. And so we're being called to use a more tactile information center. We're being called to use our brain more. We're being called to be more centered. And we're being called to use all of it together in order to re, uh, really feel into our environment and our life as a living, breathing, conscious being. And then we hone in on this phase of reduction. So we're honing in on this phase of reduction. A phase of reduction is a, is a method used to reduce a multidimensional dynamical equation describing a non-linear non limit cycle oscillator into a one-dimensional phase equation. Simple, right? 
I read that and said, okay, great. I still don't know what that means. And so in a nutshell, what I'm being called to share is that we're reducing this multidimensional equation and we're using our tactile senses to make it, to describe a nonlinear experience and bring it into a one dimensional or one version of reality phase equation. But let's play with that for a moment because it's also describing a limit cycle oscillator. So in mathematics, the study of dynamical systems with two dimensional phase space. Um, and by the way, as I wrote this, I was also seeing that we're combining, we're expanding out and we're essentially moving and creating synapses. I talked about this in my previous video. I drew a picture with us expanding. I was being shown that we're connecting these synapses. So from my perspective, we're actually bridging together realities. And that's, again, very abstract. But from a multidimensional perspective, that's what we're doing. So a limit cycle is a closed tra trajectory in phase space, having the property that at least one other trajectory spirals into. So there we go. Either as time approaches infinity or as time approaches negative infinity. Okay, well, lost again. But I see this as essentially as time goes out into either or. I didn't know there was a negative infinity. We'll play with that. But we're essentially reducing this multidimensional equation and it's describing time, right? Um, spiraling into something else, another, um, a closed tra trajectory in space, space. I really want to play with this because there's a reason that my guides are saying it in this format. It's layered. If you look at a crystal lattice work, one of these words is a node. And inside of that node, right? So for those of you who aren't aware of what a node looks like, just really quickly, Got my awesome. So we've got, I, I know I have a couple pictures here, but let's just look at this green one. So this is, let's say, a crystal lattice work. And we'll say it's a cube. Not that I did a very good job of drawing that. It's more of a, but there we go. That's a crystal structure. And each of these is a node on this crystal structure. So each of these holds information. And this is infinite. So this is goes out in a fractal, right? And we're using our senses to tune into this multidimensional reality to bring it back to our awareness and our physical center. So this has to do with our cycle of time. So again, we're looking at um, nonlinear oscillators. And if we go into this, I'm going to just pause for, oh, briefly. Well, what does this have anything to do with? Well, it has to do with what are limit cycle oscillators that have to do with phase reduction that we are creating? Well, electric circuits, chemical reactions, mechanical vibrations, cardiac cells, spiking neurons are examples of rhythmic phenomena. So it has a rhythm right? It has a cycle. It has a wave. And it can be considered as a non-linear limit cycle oscillators because there isn't necessarily what is linear. Well, that's important to understand. Linear is a single. It's single. It's You can say the step one, step two, step three, and it's one line. But the way that we're connecting is it isn't linear. There isn't necessarily point A to point B to get to point C. If you look at that crystal lattice work, you might go to one edge and go to another edge, and then eventually it all kind of pulls it back in, and we can draw all that information back into us from a nonlinear perspective. And that's one variation of what this means in our reality. So I've had to pause this a few times, guys, so I'm coming in and out, so I hope I didn't lose track here. But I wanted to just kind of go, we have been talking about linear so this is part two. We've been talking about linear um, and tactile information center. And what I was saying, let's hone in on this phase of reduction. And phase reduction is that method, right? But I also was curious about 
the one dimensional phase equation. So basically it's a method, right, to, and I'm sorry if I'm mushing these two energetic components together, but a lot of this writing is a multifaceted way of looking at things. So it's not linear, it's not point A to point B. Again, it's like that crystal lattice work. It's all connected at different points, but we can't necessarily see them in one straight line. So I was curious when I was looking at the nonlinear limit oscillator and um, into a one-dimensional phase equation, I thought, well, what is a phase equation? So a phase equation has to do with waves, which this is something that we've been talking about or I've been talking about for quite some time. And again, going back to Dan Winters and what he talks about that um, someone who watched these videos told me to tune into. So phase and waves is a formula for the phase of a periodic function, and that this is in physics and um, mathematics, of some real variable. It's an angle-like quantity representing the fraction of the cycle covered up to. So it's expressed in a scale, which always reminds me of measurements and music, and it varies by one full turn as the variable goes through each period, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason I, I just want to talk about, so I might share screen briefly. So I just wanted to go back to and kind of touch briefly on the alchemical codes and set points. So we're reducing and deducing. So we're making conclusions from this tactile information center, the ability to touch and feel and process this through our brain. And um, because of this, we're able to then bring it into our, um, the nonlinear into the linear from one perspective. Also, um, we have this new set of alchemical codes because our chemistry is changing, our frequency is changing, and this also has, to, and, it, and I wrote set points. So when we have set points, there is a point that we have to, um, it's already been set up. So we're pointing to that, just like the points on a lattice grid structure. This also has to do with potentials. So what I was getting downloaded about was us really going beyond the potential set points that we thought we were going towards. My guidance team has been showing me basically that we've gone past these set points and if you think of points like a laser beam, or if you think of a direction on a map, a pin on a map. And um, I want to just share the screen briefly and show this phase reduction so you kind of can see, oops, what it looks like on a picture. If I can, if it'll let me. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. Make this a little bit bigger. Share screen. So this is the writing. And if I go on to phase reduction, this is a picture of what this looks like. And I like this because one of the things, it talks about voltage and conducting voltage. So we're increasing our conduction. We're increasing, increasing how long our ability to conduct energy goes. And this is talking about um, when a neuron is perturbed by a stimulus current. So the stimulus is everything. Everything is a stimulus current right now. Everything is a current. But certain things are helping to stimulate, from my perspective, our current, our currency. The earth is helping us. The planets are helping us. The sun and all of the waves and plasmatic activity coming out of the sun is also perturbing and stimulating the current that we're sitting within. And it says the dynamics of this perturbed system will no longer be the same with the dynamics of the baseline neural oscillator. And the target here is to reduce the system by defining a phase. Okay, so here's a phase, a sine wave, a frequency, amplitude, and period, which to me is a set point which to me is also representative of time. Um, and this is my perspective. Obviously, this isn't the exact definition of what this is, but I am interpreting this on a multidimensional scale. <laughs> and 
we're defining a phase for each point in some neighborhood of the limit cycle, um, which I love the neighborhood, right? Somewhere in the home, the home base on earth. <laughs> um, and it says it might cause a large deviation of the phase, but the amplitude is perturbed slightly because of the attracting of the limit cycle. Hence, we need to extend the definition of the phase or the cycle or the periods of time by introducing the definition, definition of asymptotic phase or latent phase. This helps us to assign a phase to each point in the basin of attraction. And I just wanted to say this has, um, it's like two, so we'll come back to this picture in just a moment because the basin of attraction to me was symbolic. And look at this beautiful picture. In the mathematical field of dynamical systems, an attractor is a set of states toward which a system tends to evolve for a wide variety of starting conditions of the system. System values that get close enough to the attractor values remain close, even if slightly disturbed. So I want to play with this a little bit, of course, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. Here it mentions by the chain rule. And later in what I wrote, I wrote the chain gang, <laughs> uh, moving up the chain. So the chain by the chain rule, we then obtain an equation that govern the ev evolution of the phase of the neuron model that's given by the phase model. So what is that? It's a formula that expresses the derivative of the composition of two differentiable functions. Um, Whew. So all of this I could go into in a much deeper level, and I will at some point. I want to get through the writing first. Whenever I'm decoding this writing or figuring out what it means to the best of my ability, I'm going through some things that are synchronistic for me, and I'm guided to go to this chain rule. And what called me to this, it says, all extensions of calculus have a chain rule. In most of these, the formula remains the same though the meaning of that formula may be vastly different. And I really do think that that's part of this entire thing. It's like everything looks the same, but the meaning of what that is, is different than the actual formula. And it talks here, and of course that's, you know, not an exact definition of what we're talking about. This is a comparison or an analogy, right? But I love this because one generalization is to manifolds. In this situation, this chain rule represents the fact the derivative, uh, don't know what F and G is, the composite of the derivative of F and the derivative of G. The theorem is an immediate consequence of the higher dimensional chain rule given above. So I'm still not sure exactly what this means, but I love it says, a functor is an operation on spaces and functions between them. So spaces, spaces and functions between these spaces. It associates to each space a new space. And by the way, this is exactly what I say later on in the writing. And so this is how I put this all together. If I go here, I'll have to pause for just a moment. Later on, I say this, we go into a different space. So I don't know if it says recording stopped, recording in progress every single time, but also communicative rings comes up. This is the whole thing. But so it talks about it's a, the common feature is that they are expressions of the idea that the derivative is part of a new functor. So it's a new, it's an operation on spaces and functions between them. So it associates to each space a new space and to each function between two spaces a new function between the corresponding new spaces. In the, each of the above cases, the functor sends each space to its tangent bundle. I love that. And it talks about a differential manifold. Now what's interesting to me, I just wanna to touch on this briefly. I love that shape. I just took a picture of this, by the way, a few weeks back of a table that I was looking through the center of this and I thought this is going to be significant for something that I see later on and here it is. Now, I'm not going to go into all of this, but here's what I see. 
the informally the tangent bundle of a manifold, which is in this case a circle, is obtained by considering all of the tangent spaces and joining them together in a smooth and non-overlapping bundle. So all of these get gathered up and it looks like a tube. It looks like, um, and this has to do as above, so below. So this has to do with the field that's around us, the space that we're creating. But guess what? This also has to do with the tubes in our body. We have all of these synapses that are firing and we have these connections in our body. And I keep seeing them and I, I keep writing about colanders, cylindrical. And so these tubes then come together and form new spaces in the brain and in the body. And there's an actual um, layer that encapsulates, um, and I can't remember, I should, but I can't remember right now, but I'm thinking of, for example, the cerebral spinal fluid. It's enca encapsulated within a tube before it's spread back out into the blood. And it's a sheath is what I'm trying to say. So there's certain components that are sheathed in this type of bundle, which we're going to call the tangent bundle of a manifold, which for me, that's a play on words, the man, the human that folds in on itself and creates a new plane of existence. I'm playing with this, but I think it's important to kind of play with this because what I wrote was for within this swing set is a loop and I'll come back to this a binding spell, a chemical of dust, alchemical, I think is, I think that's what I was trying to write, but held within the dust that creates a spatial field of amazement. It opens a new space in space and there is the calibration and there, right, in that new space is the calibration, the exchange of foreign currency. Now, if we're exchanging foreign currency, there's an exchange rate, right? So it's you get back the rate, which has to do with uh, value, and it also has to do with currency. Do you see where these words have similar, they sound the same, but they have different definitions? And what did we just read? Um, well, different differential. So, <laughs> so funny. So it goes back to what I was saying earlier from this or what I was taking from this was that the formula remains the same, but the meaning of the formula may be vastly different. Well, the meaning of currency and the meaning of the exchange, the rate, we could use it in finances and we could also use it in biology. We could use it in all kinds of things. So we still have that same word, but the meaning takes on different meanings and different vibrations. That's one layer of this. That's a simple layer. But the dust creates a spatial field. So the dust to me are, are photons, are, is plasma, which may or may not be the same as photons, but it's plasma that's held within this field. All of this energy that's around us has weight, even though it doesn't feel like it does. And as we create a wave, it affects the field all around us. It affects this dust that we are part of, that we are intrinsically held and encased and encompassed within. So it opens a new space in space. And there in that space is the calibration, the exchange of foreign currency. So we're changing it from one currency to another, and it's going to have a slightly different calculation than it did before based on the rate of exchange. A place where new reactions are at your fingertips. So this has to do with our tactile understanding and energy that is literally available to us at our fingertips. If we go back into the chain rule, right? So what do we talk about here? The chain gang, right? Sorry if I'm making you dizzy by going up this really quickly, but here we go. Access to something already held deep within you, a chain, your chain, moving up the chain gang, the group, um, working on a road, right? Um, tickling the senses, the chain, 
uh, action at a distance. It's spooky, right? So we tickle the chain and it creates a wave that is a ripple effect. Uh, reduction, an access point, a portal into this space. And so going back into um, this new space, I wanted to just show this manifold. So all extensions of calculus have a chain rule. So the meaning of the formula may be uh, vastly different, but here we go. One general uh, generalization is to manifolds. Look at that picture. It's just so cool. In mathematics, a manifold is a topological space that locally resembles Euclidean space near each point. More precisely, an n-dimensional manifold or n-manifold for short is a topological space with property that each point, and that makes me think of the set point, has a neighborhood that is homeomorphic to an open subset of n-dimensional Euclidean space. So it's this is intersecting. Everything is connecting. Everything is morphing together. And as we combine, or what I was saying earlier, we expand out, we reach through this space, we combine this space, whether it be dimensions, whether it be cells in our body. If you ever looked for neurons in the brain, looking, creating synapses to find, they branch out in order to find other neurons. And the real projective plane is a two-dimensional manifold that cannot be realized in three dimensions without self-intersection. So they all are weaving together. Reminds me of the infinity um, symbol. It reminds me of the infinite loop, right? And topology, a surface is a two-dimensional manifold. And this is... Um, Earlier, I wrote in this about the, well, the sphere. Oh, I wrote about that in another one. But either way, we can look at this as, I love um, the open set. So this is a generalization of an open interval in the real line. That's a whole other. Jump on the line. So homeomorphic has a, okay, pause for just a minute. Give me a second. Sorry, guys. Just one of those days we're going to have some interruptions. But so in this dust, it creates a spatial field. And um, basically, there's new space that's being created in our bodies, on the earth, in the cosmos. And we are part of this creationary experience. So we've heard the term, oh, we are all creators. Well, this is true. And it's so funny. This talks about um, on Manifold, it talks about. Um, a one-dimensional manifold includes lines and circles, but not limis, limis gates, limisates, um, which I found that interesting. And I was curious to see what it was because I just talked about the figure eight. And then here it is. There it is, um, the infinity symbol. And then we're going to come back to this because I had just downloaded some information about ribbons. And this talks about um, this coming from the word ribbons. So I'm now recognizing that this is part of this and I'm not sure exactly where it fits in. So I've just uh, kind of kept it in. Um, and I had just dreamed about a horse. <laughs> you guys, this is how this works for me. So I had just dreamed about a horse and here it is. However, when the plane is tangent, um, so there's tangent in geometry, a plane curve at a given point is the straight line that just touches the curve point. So we'll come back to that as I go off on a tangent here. Uh, Proclus considered the cross sections of a torus, which this is what this is all about, the spin, the toroidal field, um, create, creating, right? I just, that picture is really cool. By a plane parallel to the axis of the torus. So it's talking about cross sections. I lost it, the figure eight shape, which Proclus called a horse fetter a device for holding two feet of a horse together or hippopede, the name Liminus of Booth. So this has to do with an algebraic curve, uh, the zero set of the quartic polynomial, which I don't know what this means, but 
I'm seeing that my guidance team is like, oh, you dreamed about a horse, pay attention. You're talking about a, a Taurus, pay attention. We're talking about ribbons, pay attention. And so from here, essentially this all has to do with time speeding up. It has to do with gravity. It has to do with our expansion. And I was writing that, you know, there is another way, another numeric system that holds the divine calculation to reboot the system. So that's something that I've written about a lot. And some point, maybe that'll come through, or maybe somebody else will read this and decode it and go, oh, this is what she's talking about. <laughs> and I wrote, but you must stay in the flow to decode. Fun, right? What I constantly get the message is you have to have fun. You have to stay in the heart. You have to be in a place of love and appreciation or bliss to feel this expansion. And what I hear as I'm writing these is music. And so I was hearing shake your honey buns from the B-52s, which that's the, those are the only lyrics, by the way, that I remembered from the B-52s. I have no idea any of the other lyrics in that song. So it says, do a little dance, make a little love for within the heart is the answer, of course. Now, that's another suggestion I would make is to look at the spirals of the heart. If you look at a heart and you actually do a dissection of a human heart, it is a, it, it wraps, it's spun, it wraps like a toroidal field. Um, and that is something that I will share. I'll have to share the link to a particular person who does anatomy on, on YouTube. He's amazing. Oh, I can't remember his name right now. I can picture him, but I'll share it on this link. But if you look at the lyrics to those honey buns or this song, it's uh, gyrate it till you've had your fill, just like a pneumatic, pneumatic drill. I'm not pronouncing that right. Don't let it go down the drain. You better hop on the cosmic wagon train. So this is just kind of hilarious that, um, let's just stop share briefly. So I'm just reading, I was having this out of body experience saw these cosmic beings everywhere I went up there they were shaking their cosmic things like someone gave you a wild goose or a freight train with the loose caboose now I know that these are their lyrics but it just takes me into the space of of my own synchronicities about the caboose the chain gang working on the railroad tracks <laughs> um and this is talking about the cosmic beings and cosmic things and a wild goose, which reminds me of a goose neck, which reminds me there's so much more. Shake it till the butter melts. Um, <laughs> there's all kinds of things. No need. To, um, so while cruising through the ionosphere, I saw these alien beings everywhere. I went up there. They were shaking their alien things. I'll give you a genuine faux pearl ring. Oh my goodness, even that's symbolic to me. So I had been writing recently about the pearls. There are these pearls that are being activated. And that to me was the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and also other glandular places and spaces in the body that are these tiny little pearls, or we could call them nodes, that hold within them this liquid light that allows us to open to all of everything that's held and encapsulated within it. So this says, I'll give you a genuine, so a true, earlier I had written true, and then a pearl ring. Well, the rings are the toroidal spins and they also represent time, rings on a tree. I think it's also ironic, it says, don't let it rest on the president's desk, rock the house. So I think that's a little bit sidebar, kind of code for, you know, this has nothing, this is beyond what we think it is. It's beyond our system. This is cosmic, everything that, um, so that was my message for my guidance team. Check this out. See how you can weave this in cosmic, cosmic, cosmic. And it's shaking things up literally in our bodies and having a ripple effect in the cosmos. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to kind of wrap this up for part one, but um, we're back on, I guess I'm not sharing screen, but um, let us reduce and deduce for our division has scattered us. So I was seeing these particles just kind of everywhere. And part of this is a plan words. It's division based on um, 
how it's a representation. Like we are divided. Many of us are divided as a human collective right now. Many people are divided on what they agree on, what they disagree on, et cetera, et cetera. And so that has caused our energy as a human race or a human create, creationary group to be scattered. The more focused intent we have on a particular subject, as we've seen, that manifests itself into that reality from one perspective. And so our energy has been scattered and that's divided us. Um, but what my guides are saying is that's not anymore. Now we're coming back to this point where we've now, if you want to call it imploded, into more. And this also has to do with mathematics. So because from my perspective, this need to divide, 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 it creates too much it, that is broken down. And essentially, we're coming back to oneness, right? We're coming back to one, which is the first, which is the beginning. And this is a new beginning from my perspective. For we understand that our creation, which I'll share screen, is larger than before. So this has to do back with those spaces that we've created, branched out into this other space. And now we have create we're in a bigger plane from one perspective of existence it is not open to descent dis to disintegration now ironically um i'll have to fix that but if you go into disintegration is actually a thing so Mathematics, the disintegration theorem, is a result in measure theory and probability theory. It rigorously defines the idea of a non-trivial restriction, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's the opposite process to the construction of a product measure. So we are not open to this. So a um, product measure, it's two measurable spaces. Given two measurable spaces and measures on them, one can obtain a product measurable space and a product measure on that space. So I feel like this is relevant. This is similar to defining the card. I don't know if I ever say this right. Cartesian product of sets and the product topology. Remember topology. We were looking at that coming together of things overlapping and uh, lines crossing and um, there can be many natural choices for the product measure. So we'll come back to this if we feel called to, but essentially this is, um, we're not open to this disintegration. We actually can measure this um, from my perspective. <laughs> and then we go into vector calculus and all kinds of fun stuff. There was more that, um, I always write about canonically, canonically, a canon. So I think that's important just to tap into briefly. In mathematics and computer science, a canonical, and apologies if I'm not saying that right, normal or standard form of a mathematical object is a standard way of presenting that object as a mathematical expression. So it provides the simplest representation of an object which allows it to be identified in a unique way. And a lot of what we're doing with this type of work is identifying things in a very unique way. So we're not open to this disintegration. Um, and there's obviously something deeper in that. Otherwise, my guides wouldn't have used that particular word. Um, for we have teleported to a new station. Now, a new residency group, a new true induction point of resonance and harmonic flow. I'm going to end on this part. I'll talk a little bit about it, and then I'll maybe do the second part later. But a new flow, a harmonic flow of Capricorn. Now, I do feel that this has to do with an astrological alignment, but it also has to do with a Capricorn represents goat's horns, right? And um, that's symbolic of what's opening in our body and our brain with our... Um, 
and our hormones and our pearls of wisdom, things that are opening inside the body. And this is hard to read, but teleport. Well, what does teleport mean? We've teleported to a new station, a new residency group, which always reminds me of home base, a place where we can take up. That's also a play on words. So we've teleported. Well, teleported has multiple um, definitions. Uh, teleportation is um, a process of moving matter from one spatial point to another without physically crossing the space in between and which are often depicted or described as happening instantaneously and through dematerialization or gateways. And I talk in this about creating a port. Now, this is theoretical, right? So from one perspective. And so it's um, we're moving matter from one spatial point to another without physically crossing the space in between. But the space in between is here. <laughs> so this is a play in words, but I found it also funny that if you look up teleported on the um, on Google, it says a center providing interconnections between different forms of telecommunications, especially one which links satellites to ground based communication. Well, interestingly enough, Capricorn is a satellite system owned by the military. So, or created by the military, whatever, it's used for telecommunications. So something is going on and maybe we have discovered this and we're just not being told as a, as a collective necessarily that this has happened. Um, but if I look this up, there is a satellite system called Capricorn and it's ironic that that is the definition of teleport. So again, it's providing interconnections between different forms of telecommunications, especially um, and a mutual connection between two or more things. I mean, so we're just kind of playing with this. So it's out there, shake your honey buns, the cosmic to ground-based communications. Our horns, Capricorn, our antennae branching out to connect synapses that are firing, bringing it into the body. A new residency group, a new true induction point. So part of, part of this is um, a new true induction point. So if I look up induction point, I know this is small, but there is induction charging is a method used to charge an object without actually touching the object to any other charged object. So that was kind of interesting, but I also see electromagnetic induction comes up first. And it's alternating electric current flows through the solenad, producing a changing magnetic field. And this comes back to what I was talking about with dust, which is plasma, which is all of this energy that's floating around us right now in the ionosphere, shake your honey buns, atmosphere. No, those are two different spaces. I understand that. But we're playing with this. It produces a changing magnetic field. Guess what? This field causes by electromagnetic induction an electrical current to flow into the wire loop. Now, this is um, very cool. Oops, I just lost. Here's, I love this picture of electromagnet electromagnetic <laughs> magnetism. <laughs> It's an interaction that occurs between particles and electric charge via electromagnetic fields. And that's what's going on. We are electromagnetic fields. Our body is an electromagnetic field. So essentially what's happening is this is causing a shift in the magnetic field. This also has to do with the sun and the dust that's coming from potentially Capricorn or a particular area in our um a solar system that is bringing us a certain alchemical juice, uh, a connection point, a particular energy. And so we've now connected with that station. We're instantaneously accessing and creating a new residency group. And when you take up residency, it's temporary housing also. We could look at it that way. So a new true uh, again, 
induction point. So we could say now this gives us the ability to change the magnetic field and create this electromagnetic induction. And this has to do with lines of force, um, the longitudinal cross-section electric current. This is kind of an electricity. The magnetic flux corresponds to the density of field lines. This is symbolic of our fields, and we're no longer on a linear line, right? It's so it's, um, I could go into so many different uh, synchronicities here that are coming up for me and what I've written about. Ooh, should I end here? I'm sure residency group actually has something to do in mathematics. It wouldn't surprise me. And maybe I will center on that at another time, but I might have I might have hit my wall here. Um, I will say this. I'll just say one more. Our light comes out in waves and pores. It comes out of our pores. It's pouring out, moving through things. It floods the senses. Again, we're coming back into our extrasensory uh, field, for we are a higher spectrum. Now, granted, my guides are telling me this. So the beings that are communicating with me are a higher spectrum of the evolutional chain of variance. But what they're referring to are, I could say that I'm communicating with future version of myself <laughs> in a higher dimension. Therefore, we are the higher spectrum in this physical body now. And we're creating a variance. And I do want to kind of end on this note because it's it's cool to kind of tie it in, in this one video. So we are a higher spectrum of the evolutional chain. Back to chains again, DNA, DNA sequencing, a variance. Well, a variance, here's a picture. Um, I'm going to skip some of this, but variance is a measure of dispersion. And dispersion is the extent to which a distribution is stretched or squeezed. Common examples, standard deviation, interquartile range. Um, and it talks about, oh, I've got to click on this because it's talking about scattered. For instance, when the variance of data in a set is large, the data is widely scattered. So... <laughs> I could go back to this, um, but essentially it means it is a measure of how far a set of numbers is spread out from their average value. Now, I see this as a multidimensional um, meaning, of course, and I see this in part that our distribution has gotten bigger. How we're sending these energy out, how we're distributing it is much larger than we could possibly understand. And also we have surpassed the expectations of the set points we've already gone beyond. I'm, I keep hearing above and beyond. Um, so many different places here. So. We could go into all kinds of things here, but we won't. We'll come back to that at another time, too, because I'm just trying to keep this part simple. Come what may, good sport, old chap. And I'm sure that has more meanings, but essentially, let us play. Our bandwidth reunifies at a higher conduction speed, a zippy reduction moment, a grassroots band. So I'm going to end on this note for real, <laughs> because essentially what's happening is when I talk about the grassroots band, it's the beginning. We're the beginning of this new bandwidth. Um, we're coming back to our roots. We're coming back into wholeness and oneness. We're, we're reunifying. So what I was shown is that the beings out here have been waiting for us to expand out to meet them. And I'm going to say beings, the energy, the frequency, the dimensions, right? Um, it doesn't have to be our extraterrestrial brothers and sisters, although that could be part of it. This is a higher definition. So Again, as within, so without. Um, we're having a higher impact and we're in a higher impact zone. Everything has become more harmonic. We're becoming more sensitive to all of these energies and it's creating a harmonic leveling up. And this conduction speed has to do with electricity and it has to do. So I'm going to end on this note and just say that part of this is a lot of the energies that are coming in are 
creating even more. So we're really being called to take care of ourselves and to recognize the impact that we are having and to really connect with the earth, the grass, the grassroots bandwidth. Because when we connect with the earth, we met, we're, we're, connecting to the magnetic, electrical magnetic energy, electromagnetic energy of the earth. And we're able to then, I'm hearing create a manifold and that's a play on words. We're connecting our resources and this creates a higher charge in these as nodes on the earth. And we become a higher point, a higher reference point. We're able to find direction and change our directional course in a much more fundamental way. So I'm just in flow, whatever. There's a lot of words that just were coming in, but I'm going to end on that note because I could go on and on and on. And it's very exciting and it's a lot of fun. I do go on to talk about Don't Rock the Boat Baby, and that reminds me of the ba and the ka. So I'm going to share a little bit of what the next video will be about. Um, the part two, we're going to talk about frequency conduction, flame letters, um, sound and frequency, uh, booms in the, and sonar. We're going to talk about whales. <laughs> we're going to talk about deep space nine. Um, and we're going to talk about diamonds and quartz and, and some of these. And, um, also we're going to talk about Lux. Now Lux is a plan words with the luminous, luminous flux. So we're talking about light per square meter. and all kinds of fun things. So quantum signal verification, we're going to talk about our spacesuit and gossamer threads, which have to do with moths and, um, oh boy, oh boy, silk. So there's so much to this. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me on this little adventure, this little story. And uh, I hope you'll join me next time when I complete um, the sharing of, of what this represents for me. So in love and light, guys, thank you. Namaste.